I vividly remember the first time I ever presented in front of an audience, just like this. And it was my first semester in university. And up until then, the only experience that I had of public speaking or appearing in public is from watching my teachers giving their talks during morning assemblies. I wasn't offered an opportunity to present in public up until I was 20 years old. And while growing up, I was a very active participant in sports as well as social activities. I didn't have much difficulties interacting with others. And I was thinking to myself, no big deal, right? I just prepared the points beforehand and I can just present it in front of others just like how I would talk to my friends. Sounds easy, but it turned out to be very difficult. So as soon as I walked up in front of the classroom, my body began to tremble. And as I struggled for what words to say, I began to stutter so much, I felt a sense of anxiety overwhelming my body. And there were long, uncomfortable moments of silence. And with each passing moment, this voice in my head grew louder and louder that I'm making a fool of myself or that others will make fun of me. It eventually became a mess. We evaluate threat in terms of its potential for failure and this activates cognitive schemas or beliefs associated with feeling, sorry, failing. And it's interesting to note that this fear of failing Comes from, and comes from a. If I'm experiencing the anxiety right now, <laughs> a real case scenario. <clears throat> this fear of failure comes from an irrational and inaccurate estimation of reality, and comes from this belief as opposed to what is actually going to happen. What this means is that before even taking action, this thought in my mind has already arisen that I will fail and the worst case scenario will happen. So in my clinical practice, my clients are trained and develop cognitive skills in order to evaluate events around them as realistically and rationally and objectively as possible. Somehow in our human nature, we have this tendency to emphasize negative consequences and failures as opposed to successes. And this in turn magnifies this thought process that fear of that failure is imminent, that the worst case scenario will happen. It is well established in psychological literature that one way to manage and overcome this fear of failure is by taking action and noticing the evidence that follows. It comes in many different terms. Cognitive restructuring, graded exposure, behavioral activation, but it essentially provides the same outcome in that it develops a healthy sense of self-esteem in managing our doubts and fears, as well as develop a realistic idea of our own sense of competence. I did not take that experience in university as a form of weakness and instead took it up as a challenge. Before every presentation, including this one, I prepare more beforehand. I may prepare cue cards in case I forget certain points. I even challenge this anxiety one step further by approaching strangers at my university, at malls, at bars, whenever I'm out, by asking for the time, something very simple. I even approach strangers taking up a notch by um, introducing my name as well as getting theirs. And eventually work my way up towards initiating conversations as well. What I've realized is that the more that I did this, the worst case scenario doesn't really happen. And in the off chance that it actually does happen, it turns out to be not really bad after all. And I've had my fair share of public speaking or presenting in front of my audience um, ever since that paralyzing speech in university. And one thing that I've come to accept is that this anxiety and this feeling doesn't really change. 
I always feel this trembling before coming up to an audience. I always feel this scrambling uh, for words to say. I feel a gush of blood up to my head and I feel that anxiety. But what has changed though is the belief in managing that situation better compared to before. And there really isn't any wisdom or any talent related to doing this. It just comes from repeating that same behavior over and over and over again. And in your life, you might have seen someone doing something that you always want to do. It can be anything, skateboarding or drawing, anything. And you are thinking to yourself, I can't do it, or it's beyond my abilities, or this person has a special talent. This person has been in the same position as you. And the only difference is that this person started doing it and currently has more experience. Let's take a moment to consider the shared experience that we all have. And that is the experience growing up as a child. And as a child, we didn't automatically know how to walk. We started first with crawling. And through repeated trial and error, eventually developed the skill to walk. And this goes the same with any other skills that we develop while growing up as well. It can be talking, it can be riding a bike, it can be singing. The same principle applies in that trying and trying again and failing is embedded within the success of acquiring a new skill. But throughout our development to being an adult, somehow we will be more conditioned in order to avoid this failing and avoid this trying from taking on its own natural course. So, what important factor in a child's life and development comes from having a secure relationship with an attachment figure? And this primarily is the father or the mother. In psychological terms, it's called a secure base. A secure base offers the child this trusting relationship with this figure and allows him or her to be confident in securing the world. So imagine this child crawling in the room and then he attempts to stand up and takes the first few steps. And then he falls over. He looks to the attachment figure and sees that, okay, this person is still here, it's all right. And then he tries again. So in that sense, this child developed the confidence in order to walk, confidence in order to speak those first few words, and develop further skills as he or she grow up uh, in his or her life. The question is, is a secure base necessary in an adult's life, such as you and me? And the answer is yes. In overcoming and taking action towards what we are fearful of, what can be very helpful is to have a positive relationship with someone who has gone through a similar concern. This gives us the calm and assurance that someone else has already done it, so it can't be that bad, or that I'm not alone in this. And this, in the modern world, can come in the form of a business mentor, a coach, a college senior, or a lecturer. It can be anyone, really. Someone who will be able to offer a listening ear and most importantly for us to develop a trusting relationship with ourselves in knowing that taking action despite failure will eventually lead to success. Jack Canfield, the co-author of Chicken Soup for the Soul, mentioned that whatever and everything that you want lies on the other side of fear. In conclusion, taking repeated positive action while having a point of reference in somebody else allows us to be empowered over our fears as opposed to live within the rules created by them. So what are you waiting for? It's time for us to start doing something. Thank you very much.